Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're doing a couple of things. We have a lot going on at our house today. We have our contractors coming to start the grading and I'll give you guys an update of how that area is looking. Um, we're also gonna be planting up some containers in the front and with everything else going on, like containers are really not at the top of my list, but our entryway has literally been like a catch all space. It's just full of shoes and plants and we just thought like, let's make this area a little bit nicer. Just when our friends and family come over, it's not like a crazy jungle. You can see we still have a lot of plants everywhere. Sergey is still moving some of our plants up front so you might see him walking back and forth but this space filled up so fast and luckily our neighbors are like the best and they're allowing us to keep a lot of our plants on their property until we can get things to our backyard again which is really great of them um, but yeah we just have a lot going on and with our other containers right here kind of where we have our hydrangea uh, standard we're just keeping these containers super basic i think last year we did like some really beautiful combinations but this year I'm just using pansies. I have some purple pansies planted over here. And then our other green containers by our clematis, we just put the petunia and they still have the arborvita. And again, just like with everything else going on, containers are not at the top of my list, but I do have a couple more container projects. But for today, let me show you the plants that we're gonna be using. Let me show you the space and then we will talk about what is going on in the back. So for my centerpiece, for our big container, I am going to use this purple fountain grass. And I love using purple fountain grasses just because they have such a beautiful texture. I think I used these last year in some fall container, um, but they're so beautiful and they get about 24 to 36 inches tall. And they're really great in flower beds, borders, or in containers like we're going to be using today. Um, the great thing about these is I will use these up until our fall containers and I'll take them out when we do our winter containers, but they last such a long time and again just that texture is so stunning and if you have an empty area in your garden that you want to fill quickly purple fountain grasses are so so amazing for that because they really fill in and just take up a lot of space i'm also going to be using these um bacopas and i love love bacopas i think they're just so fun they're perfect in containers they're really beautiful ground cover just like such a beautiful little white flower with that yellow throat um, these get about four to six inches tall, so not very tall. And again, they're really great in hanging baskets, great in containers. And if you have an area where you need a good ground cover, I totally recommend Bacopas. And the great thing about using this as a ground cover, it will help suppress the weeds. So if you're somebody who gets kind of lazy and you don't like to weed your beds that often, I think popping in um, annuals like these are a great way to do that. Next, I'm going to be using these Silver Dusty Miller. I love a Dusty Miller for containers for a couple of reasons. One, they add a really beautiful texture, something a little bit different, and I do like how they break up the colors in containers. Often you'll see, especially in my containers, I have a lot of green or pinks or purples or whites, and I think Dusty Miller really complements all of those colors, and it just kind of stands out. And they are small, as you guys can see, I'm planting really small ones. But as long as you're fertilizing your containers once a week, these will get pretty massive. So don't think you need to go out and buy big plants, big annuals, because as long as you're fertilizing them, they really will fill in nicely. So keep that in mind when you're shopping for your annuals this year. Another filler I am going to be using are these gorgeous cappuccino petunias. Now, I told myself this year I would be using a lot of yellow, but when I saw these, I was like, mm, hold up. We are going to switch it up and we're going to be using purples and pinks. And finally, we have these gorgeous Saratoga Apple Blossom Nicotiana. And I saw these on my way out, like right after I checked out of the nursery, I saw these in the corner of my eye and I just thought, oh, hold on, hold on, what is this? And right when I saw them, I immediately thought of Hawaii. I just love how they have this like really beautiful pinky tone and the underside is nice and pink. It's just, it's like such a girly flower. Um, and these will bloom all summer long and they get about 10 to uh, 12 inches tall and wide. And they're really good in borders, beds, and containers like we would be utilizing them today. And I think this guy, I have some other plants here. I don't think I'm gonna be using this, no. This I'm gonna be using for another container. So let me show you the containers that we're gonna be planting up today. 
Okay, so these are the containers that we're going to be using. Now, as you guys can recall last year, we used these stone color, like a gray concrete color um, containers last year. And we do have those in the back, but this year I just wanted to keep these containers. They have this beautiful like gold um, color to them. And especially when the sun hits them, they just look so beautiful. These were our winter containers. And I typically move these in the back because they are darker. But I'm just like, there's just so much going on. I think these are going to be perfect this year. Now this front, I think we talked about it changing last year and we never got around to doing it. But the hopes is we're going to add some, um, I think stone, we're going to extend this entryway a little bit more. Use stone. The brick is going to get painted when we do the siding. You can tell the siding is awful. So what we hope to do and well, Sergey and I haven't talked about this, but my plan is to continue the brick on this side so it looks a little bit more balanced. I'm not sure if that's what we're going to do, but that's what I would like to do. And we're definitely gonna paint it because I'm not a huge fan of the brick, this color. I think when you paint brick white or do like a whitewash, it looks so much prettier. I just don't like it in this space. I do love brick and I like the red brick like this too, but just not in this space. Anyways, so yeah, these are the containers. I'm gonna keep it very minimal. Like we're just gonna keep it beautiful and basic and just add some beautiful color up here. And then on this little stump, we did have a little container and I've already moved those plants um, into the landscape, but I am going to be planting it up with something else. So I'm thinking either a hookra, this obsidian hookra, just like this. And again, I think this will look pretty with the coleas and with the petunias, or I might do this uh, rock and round pop star sedum. I love the texture of a sedum, and this area does get full sun, especially in the afternoon, so this might perform a little bit better. Um, oh, and I completely forgot. We're gonna do dahlias. How could I forget? So these are the dahlias that we're going to be planting in the smaller containers, and I'm gonna keep it very simple. So these are, Happy Days White. These are the dahlias. And these only get uh, 10 to 14 inches uh, tall and wide, and they'll require full sun. Now, unlike the rest of the container, dahlias don't require too much food. So I'll only be fertilizing them maybe once a month. But again, I'm looking at this dark, the dark leaves, which again will play off really nicely with the petunias and the coleus. So we're gonna do one in each of those small containers right over here. And I think once they get a little bit more established, these are just gonna fill in and be so stunning. The, the blooms on it look a little bit not so great because they just got done blooming, but look at that color. It just has like, it looks like a sunset. It has a little bit of yellow, a little bit of pink, a little bit of cream. And I've noticed the bees just go wild for, for these um, specifically. So anyways, let's get planting. All right, let's take a look. So I did make a couple of changes. First, I forgot to mention the coleus that we planted. I completely forgot. And this is the Main Street Abbey Road coleus. And this one gets about 20, or I'm sorry, 12 to 24 inches uh, tall and wide. So I am like obsessing over coleus this year. I don't know like why, maybe you guys love them too, but I'm just loving the texture and I think 
this dark purple and this green on the outside of their leaves really plays really well with the purple fountain grass in the center. I got everybody watered in. Now, as far as the um, Dusty Miller, I did not use that. It just did not look good. But I did pop in one of these uh, helotropes. And this one will get, let's see, 15 to 24 inches tall and wide. So these just have the prettiest little purple flowers and they'll really fill in. And I know I probably went a little too hard with planting, but it's okay. Like, it is what it is. I wanted something to look really beautiful. And the only thing I don't love is that I know this is a dark container and some of the flowers we planted are dark. It'd be so amazing to have our siding done because it's going to be like a creamy white. So I think things would pop out so much more, but I think as these get bigger, they're going to look really beautiful. And as far as our uh, dahlias goes, I have to deadhead them and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. So because I want to encourage them to continuously bloom, I'm going to come in and just remove any of the spent blooms and this is just going to clean them up and these will get really beautiful and full once it starts getting warmer so I, I they look a little bit small right now but like i said once everything just starts really the season kicking off and the temperatures rise these will get really beautiful um, and massive and produce a lot of really beautiful flowers so it's kind of hard to do with one hand but so you see i'll just come down to the next set of buds and just chop it right there like that and that will really um, send energy to the new blooms that are trying to produce so I think these are going to be such a beautiful addition and again just such a stunning little flower I love these dahlias now the other flower that I'm going to be deadheading are the petunias you don't necessarily have to but I just like things to look tidy so I'll just come in and you could really just use your hands to do this and just remove any spent blooms. That way it's not going to look messy um, or sloppy as they continuously bloom. This one, well, this one is just ripped, so it's fine. But to deadhead, when it's done uh, blooming, I'll just come in and pinch them off just like that. So, but I'm excited to see them really fill in the space. And I think we put in three in each one. We did one coleus, one purple fountain grass, two of the bacopas, one of the helotropes, and then we matched the same on this side. Now the Nicotiana I planted in this container. We did have the white one, but it just, it was too white and it did not like, it was just clashing too much with the other containers. But I like this gold one because it kind of matches the other ones. It's kind of like that dark gold bronze color. So I think that's going to be really beautiful as these get bigger. And again, these I'll just deadhead and cut them back as they start shooting uh, new blooms. But doesn't that look so pretty? And I just used some moss to dress up the container a little bit, but I think it looks so pretty and I think it's just going to complement um, the petunia so well uh, in this space right here. Now, as far as feeding and watering goes, so these containers are not on drip, which means I'm going to have to water them once a day, maybe once or maybe twice a day, depending on how hot it gets. Usually towards the middle of the season is when I have to up the watering because this area gets full sun in the afternoon, but I think they'll be okay for the most part. Um, as far as feeding goes, we did use Biotone Starter Fertilizer, which I typically don't do in containers, especially because we are using new soil but I really wanted these plants to have a like a kickstart from the go. And we also added some slow release fertilizer, which I totally recommend you guys do because if you're like me who probably forgets to fertilize your containers every week, this is a good buffer to have. So I typically recommend you feed your containers once a week, but this year I'm gonna try to do it every other week because we have the biotone and because we have that slow release, I think that is really going to hold these containers over well without having to fertilize every single week. So keep that in mind. Again, I do highly recommend the uh, slow release and the water soluble if you really wanna push your annuals to the next level. And I will link those in the description box in case you wanna order them for your gardens this year. But I think this year is gonna look really pretty once things start to grow in. Now the dahlias, like I said, those I will not be feeding every week. These like annual dahlias, last year I had them two little white ones. And I just feel like they 
don't, they didn't react really well to having fertilized or being fertilized every week. So I think once a month for them will be more than fine, especially because they have the biotone and they have the slow release fertilizer. I think they're going to be more than happy with that. So anyways, it's just going to be exciting to see all of these containers fill in. And of course, we'll post pictures and updates on social media. So on our Facebook and our Instagram page um, as the season progresses. Okay, so this is what we're looking like right now. And you can see like this area looks so much more open. I love it. I'm really considering doing something a little bit more vertical versus something that is bushier like the ones we had here before. I think it was some sort of dogwood, I think. I, I, I could not identify that plant. But anyways, we are so excited because it's actually happening. <laughs> We were, we told ourselves we can get this done in a day. Like we can move everything. Like Suri and I, we can like, we can work hard. Like we're really, like when it gets, like when time is of the essence, we can really just pull it together and get it done. But you guys, it took us like four days to get this all done and we had to go to the dump. Oh, it was just <laughs> like, it was a joke. But anyways, we have some plants over here because they're not going to be moving, um, this pile of wood i told you guys to use this is the wood that i'm going to be using to make tables and if you look over here look at how crazy big the yard looks right now i'm like oh my gosh it's it's incredible so we had so many more plants to dig up that i didn't even like realize the grapes are coming down today we did take out the cherry and i just feel like this area is so much more open the only thing I don't love right now that I'm seeing a lot of are the wires you guys can see, but we are talking to PGE about maybe doing something over here. And we did like, we had a small, very small discussion about possibly having this pole removed and having things buried. But honestly, in this neighborhood, it's going to be such an undertaking that we don't think it's worth it. Like, we're not gonna live here forever and it's like not the worst, so it could be worse. But we do think we can get rid of some of these wires because we do have power running underground. So I'm not sure why we have these wires connected to the house, which will be nice because when we're redoing the siding and the gutters, like we really don't want any wires um, coming down on the house if we can help it. I know some of it will have to, but anyways. So look at this crazy, crazy mess. So what they're going to be doing is they're going to take apart the fence on the other side. Over here, I just have a couple things to move. They're going to be taking the fence down over there and they'll pull the branches on our little spruce over there up. So hopefully it's not going to get too damaged, but it's okay if it does. And they're going to start ripping out all of the grass and all of the weeds. They're going to move this dirt around a bit and we might have to actually go pick up more soil i'm not sure yet but you can see look at the ground I, it might be a little bit difficult to see but everything is so uneven and it has been do you see how it just like it takes a dip when you come into this area where some of our dahlias were planted so it's just going to be really nice to have like one even space and they have the cutest little uh <laughs> tractor so i'm going to try to get some footage of them doing the work but like having the space open like this and having the plants out really kind of just puts things into perspective for us. Like this is going to really allow us to bring in our trees in first and kind of do it methodically so we're not having to move things down the line i mean anyways that's it for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed watching that come together and again with like in the midst of everything else going on it's just it feels good to have one area that it looks a little bit presentable and hopefully we will get this area changed this year like i mentioned we weren't able to do it last year but hopefully this year um, we're going to be able to start doing the outside work as well to the house and we have of course a lot of projects to do inside um, but yeah it just feels good and uh, there's just so much to do and I'm just so anxious for them to start like I cannot wait to plant our dahlias and all of our seedlings and I'm just so like excited and eager and optimistic about everything so anyways I hope you guys are all having a really beautiful day and I hope you're having fun in your garden right now and yeah thank you guys so much for watching today's video and I'll see you guys next time Bye-bye.